Welcome back. Oh, well, designing new experiences implies rethinking your business model, right? Brands struggle to deliver experiences because their model need to evolve. Our next speaker is a citizen of the world, born in Paris. He has lived around the world. He has designed, developed, and prototyped the New Balance Global Past, Present, and Future retail concept. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the mastermind behind the brand's New Balance Experience retail concept, Bob Neville. Hey, Bob. Oh, sorry, introduction. Have you got the. <laughs> Just get the blipper. Hopefully, the blipper will work. So uh, I've, I've met quite a few of you here today, and it's been absolutely awesome experience walking around um, all the different ways that technology brings our professional and personal lives really to life. And, and there's so much you can actually get from, from this sort of event. And it's, it's something actually where, as I've been sitting there watching different presentations, I've actually really sort of wondered what I would think if as a, you know, a young designer at art school, I was teleported here and sat in a chair and listened to some of these presentations. Um, it, it really would be you know, science fiction. It's, it's incredible the amount of change, the capability that can actually be created and implemented you know, around the world and in our professional lives on a, on a daily basis. I'll come back to, to the image here, which is what I class as my home, my design home. I'll come back to that. But I wanted to start off. A lot of guys have had some very flashy images of them when they're professional designers and sound effects and everything. But I thought it was quite important, as I'm presenting here for Desalt Systems, to highlight the fact that, as, as you said, I was born in Paris um, and actually spent my formative years living in the house of Maurice Chevalier. So uh, for those of you who don't know, he's quite a famous pop star back in the day. Um, what it also means a lot for me in this, in this particular picture is, for me, design, great design, always comes down to people. It comes down to human beings and human interaction. And... Yeah, here's a, an image of myself, just in case you wondered whether that was me. Um, that's actually my mother. I'm in the, in the bath. Um, but those human experiences, and you know, when you go through life as a designer, it's really important to remember you know, where you've come from and where you're going and how you can use the skill sets that you learn, the life experiences you learn, and the technology available to you to really bring what you have professional responsibility for alive. Um, one of the first successes I had um, was designing a, ch a child's toy. And the first thing I did is I turned around to my mum and said, what do I play with? What did I play with as a young boy? You know, because it's a, it's a basic form of research. Um, you could probably imagine, judging by this picture, uh, we came from quite humble backgrounds, and she said, a peg in a pan. And I said, well, I don't think that's really going to sell particularly well in Toys R Us, but it, it sort of set us on a path of, of thinking about the end user. What, what is it that's really going to trigger uh, an emotional response, an emotional connection, um, and ultimately sell stuff? Um, my job, although I'm a... a, a formally qualified designer with quite a few years experience, my job is to help the business sell stuff through creative skills. Art school in, uh, in the 80s looked very, very different than it did now. Um, we learned to model make uh, out of pieces of wood and bits of plastic and spray paint. We learned ceramics. Um, we even learned to draw with burnt bits of wood um, so for me, you know, again, when you look at where we are and where we've come from in such a short space of time, it's really quite incredible the technology and the capabilities that are available to us. But I also feel very strongly that it's important that we don't lose connection with core human skills. And the reason I say that is that my, my eldest son uh, has his own design business, and we made sure all the way through his upbringing, not only could he use software and computers um, you know, extremely quickly and proficiently, but that he could also draw. You know, he could pick up a pencil, he could pick up a piece of wood, and he could draw and express himself. And I think that is extremely important. 
But how does a 51-year-old guy you know, from Paris, standing here uh, in Milan, actually make a difference in this modern world and create a future for the company and the brand that he has a responsibility for? I work uh, for the company New Balance. Uh, it's privately owned uh, by the family Jim Davis and Ann Davis, incredible people. Um, they own a number of brands such as Rockport and other brands that uh, you would have come into contact with out there on the high street. Uh, they also are involved with properties such as the Boston Red Sox Liverpool Football Club. And my job with uh, New Balance and for Jim is, is to bring his brands to life. My job is to sell things through the creative expression, through creating three-dimensional spaces. Um, funnily enough, I don't actually design any footwear or apparel, but my job is to create that brand experience. When you look at a global brand, you'll also see that it has a very different gestation period. And New Balance uh, is one of the oldest brands out there. It's 110 years old. And it's 110 years old, uh, based out of Boston. And I'll come to the history in a bit more detail. But what that means is that the brand can mean very different things in different countries. And the consumer profile could also be very different. So again, as a global executive, it's my role, my responsibility to ensure that we're, we're educating, we're bringing people up to speed with what the brand is about, where it's come from, and where we're going. This may look like a bit of a random slide, and uh, normally with presentations and things, I carry around chicken's feet. Uh, New Balance was founded in 1906 by an English guy. All, all great things are founded by English guys. And um, he discovered, or he looked at how chickens with their feet had perfect balance. And what he did in 1906 was patented the arch support, the sort of thing you see in lots of different places now. But back in 1906, he invented the uh, arch support and was selling the arch support. He would customize those arch supports. So again, it's, it's human connectivity. It's helping you move better. And what's really important with that is in the day, there wasn't the cars, there, there was carriages. But predominantly, you walked around. And if your shoes were uncomfortable, it had a massive impact on your life. So a pair of arch supports uh, would retail for around five US dollars at a time when a pair of shoes would also cost you about five US dollars, uh, everything being handmade. So you can imagine that the benefit that these brought were quite significant compared to the value of the product relative to the shoes that you're putting them within. So our heritage from 1906 all the way through to current day is about people helping people move better, to perform better, to live their lives in a better way. I've been very fortunate with, with my role because I work directly with Jim, who's an ex extremely great guy. Um, I spent time with his, with his mother, and we're going through family photographs and all sorts of things, which enables my job as a creative director with the responsibility to bring his brand to life, to really understand what the, where the brand has come from, what does the brand mean, what, what should it mean, what are those attributes that we should keep going forward. And a number of photographs here that I've put up. Uh, the first one at the top, this is uh, New Balance's first, or New Balance Arch Company's first salesman. He was a guy called William Hall, and he would travel around the world, or not travel around the world, it'd take him a long time in that car. Uh, he would travel around the States and basically approach people and, and have clinics where he would uh, measure their feet and create arch supports for them um, to give them quick comfort with a free trial. So again, this is very much that personal interaction. You can also see from some of these shop fronts, um, there's words, things like um, custom and orthopedic. Um, it doesn't actually talk about fashion. It's about pure engineering, uh, biomechanical engineering to help people move far better. Um, the location here uh, still exists, and one of the things that I really, really want to do is, is actually get that space back and create, uh, recreate that existing store. Um, currently, it's a tanning salon, so uh, it's a little bit hard to get them to move out. But uh, New Balance is a direct-to-consumer business, arch supports for people's feet, helping people move better, um, one consumer at a time. 
Imagine New Balance starts in 1906. Yeah, by the time you get to 1956, five megabyte of memory still takes a whole lot of guys to get it onto the side of a truck. So again, when you're looking at a brand that needs to have global relevance today, with all that technology and everything, all those great things we've seen over the last couple of days, how do you ensure that we have relevance, not just in the past, but in, in the future? Yeah, and, and in, since 1906, right through to present day, over 110 years, there is a lot of things that have happened, a lot of things that have evolved, and a lot of companies that have fallen by the, way by, uh, by the wayside. But it's really, really important, and this is something uh, that I use on quite a regular basis, but it's all about having the consumer at the center of what it is we do. That's something that was at the heart of how we started, backfitting arch supports to people. Um, but over the last 103 years or so, at some point we've become more focused on creating footwear uh, in the 1930s, boxing shoes, running shoes, creating footwear and dealing more in a wholesale mentality. Um, that very much means you're interested in the sell-in, but the sell-through is of, of less interest to you. What you need to do is we become more consumer-centric which we've done over the last sort of 10 years or so, um, we've put the consumer at the center of everything we do. And it's really important to do that because instead of it being a very traditional model where you would expect people to walk into your environment, interact with your brand as you would want them to, uh, the consumer now can interact with our brand at any point, at any time. Absolutely. You guys could be sitting there on our mb.com website. You could be posting reviews. You could be doing all sorts of things. But it's really important. Sorry. Ah. It's really important that you don't rely on technology because technology can let you down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's always important to have that combination of physical and virtual. And I think it's particularly important when it comes to footwear and apparel, things that you put on a human body. At some point, you want to stop interacting with a brand virtually and you actually want to put that physical product on your foot and see how it feels. So the physical part and the uh, virtual part are a real key combination of how we do things. We have physical retail around the world and I'll show you how we've developed that. But we also have quite a bit of uh, virtual capability. And the reason I'm standing up here now uh, at a Desalt conference is because we as, a, as, as New Balance have a number of different touch points with the Desalt company. If you like, we go from uh, material sourcing, material planning, product line planning, um, merchandising collections, right through to consumer interface. So one of the, th the things that we did was we took um, the A to Z of Desalt uh, capability and we put that above the A to Z, if you like, of, of our work streams, of our, our departments, our areas of activity, to see where those touch points were. And what was interesting with that is that it almost took, an, it literally it took an external organization to highlight the fact to us as a global organization that we were dealing with DeSalt, I think, at about four or five different touch points, four or five different departments, and nobody had connected those dots. So again, it's really important to think about your business in its entirety, from, from design right through to that consumer experience. Physical and both virtual. Shoes have come a long way uh, from, from the arch supports of 1906. Yeah, here you can see what I think um, yeah, is from 2012, designed for the uh, London Olympics for our athletes to race in. Um, makes use of sonic welding, um, custom footbeds. Um, these are really beautifully engineered uh, pieces of art almost. Um, and you can see here by this pattern, the various stress points, the various points where it need, you know, that shoe needs to be stronger, areas where it needs to help that athlete perform better. Um, taking that one stage further, um, these shoes here, the outsoles, are digitally printed. Um, so we've got the capability with a license for this flexible material uh, to digitally print shoes direct from an a, uh, um, electronic output from the athlete's foot. 
Um, that's something we've been doing now for uh, quite a while. So a number of Premiership League football players have been wearing digitally printed outsoles on, on their football boots. Um, a number of athletes, milers, have been racing and running in digitally printed uh, footwear. Um, but we see very much the future of where we head, which is about um, personal service, providing great fitting shoes. That fit element is a key part of what we do. And how we're developing that further is it's no longer just about putting your foot into that metal device that you would get in the shoe shop, the Brannock device. What we're able to do now in our stores is three-dimensionally measure your feet um, right there in the store. Um, you just put your feet in there and you get this three-dimensional, uh, fully dimensioned image of your foot that enables us to make sure you've got the right product for your feet. And we can also take uh, and measure your gait when you run. You, don't no long, you no longer have to be on a treadmill, on a running machine. You could literally do it over about five feet and um, we can do it with an iPad. So through Volumental and Stride ID, um, which are technologies we've been developing, um, we stay true to who we are, which is about fit and about ensuring that people are moving better, whether that's an older consumer um, or whether that's you know, the, the, the youngest of athletes out there. It's really important to make sure they get great fitting, great performing footwear. As you've probably gathered, you know, in my, my 50, almost 52 years on, on planet Earth, I've had quite a traditional design education. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm someone that believes very much in how a human being is going to interact with a space, with a product. And the image up here shows just one area of what we have just outside Shanghai. I live, I live in Hong Kong. Um, but this is just outside Shanghai. Um, it's about 50,000 square feet of development center. Um, at any one time, I can get about 50 uh, Chinese guys that are working in metal, wood, plastics, whatever we need to create and build things. So this view here is uh, just one area of, of my design center, and it's a um, totally reskinable, reconfigurable, three-story flagship store um, that is off the high street and, and totally uh, uh, flexible in terms of how we can work with that, um, create things, and try things out before we put them on the high street. This gives a slightly, it gives a slightly different view. This is one of the presentation areas that we've got there. The other thing that we'll do is when we've got the ability to create spaces like this in China, um, you know, we can do it quite cost effectively. It's a rather large space you know, underneath the area that I'm standing in there. We've effectively got a, a small, um, almost like shopping center. And again, we're able to build in different concepts. And my guys are there working at Shanghai at the minute, uh, working through a women's specific uh, concept. And the way we'll share that is using, again, technology, things like um, Nano 360, where we could use the camera to take a uh, 360 movie. Um, obviously, you don't necessarily have it like this. This is just for the point of presentation. But that movie can then be transferred to um, the guys in Boston who can then review um, in a virtual way the environment we've created in China um, through the use of their, their iPhone, literally through using the, the power of the processing uh, power they have in, in the back pocket. A little, a little bit random, but this is something I'm really quite proud of. Um, when we first started doing design and development in Shanghai, um, some of the places can be a little bit grim, and our toilets were literally just a hole in the ground and we had no heating, so we could only work there for a short space of time before our hands got really freezing cold. Um, this, this was inspired by the, uh, the Prada building here in Milan, but this is our washrooms and shower rooms at our development center. Um, we did it quite cost effectively because we've got guys there that can make things on site. But again, it's all about that human experience. It's about getting people into our branded environments and understanding who we are and what we're about. So bringing things up to today, this gives a, an illustration of um, our new corporate head, head office, our headquarters uh, there in Boston. In front of that, we've got a, a flagship store, uh, which basically we use as a development space for all the uh, global business units that are based in head office you know, behind. Um, it's not currently a highly 
densely, densely populated area, but we're building, and Jim Davis and Anne are building a whole new town around there. The, um, there's ice rinks, there's running tracks, there's housing, there's a train line, there's all sorts of things going in there. Um, but this shows the sort of thing that we do, you know, going from some of those images you saw earlier on in terms of where we were back in the day with retail. Yep. To things like this, this is um, a store we just opened in uh, Harajuku. Um, this was yeah, a hole in the ground to uh, the complete building being opened. Um, a different representation, a future looking representation of the brand, using a lot of digital, using a lot of uh, interactive experience within these spaces. Um, we're utilizing what we call MB1, which is a product configurator um, that we worked on with Dassault Systems. Um, we're also looking at that uh, product configurator being able to be used um, external facing on uh, store windows. Um, we also have a global partnership with Samsung that are very interested and very keen on what we're doing and how we're doing things and the sort of locations that we're appearing in. This location here, um, it's in, um, in Seoul, Korea. Um, the sort of challenges that we get and the lack of uh, luxury when it comes to time, um, we signed the lease. There was two separate buildings. The buildings were at different levels. Um, the lease was signed at the beginning of March 2016. Um, we got ownership. Um, we actually went in there, did some site measurement at the beginning of uh, January and um, the building opened uh, mid-March. Um, so again, yeah, I'm dealing with an individual's private money. You know, it, it, he looks me in the face and you know, I don't want to quote Donald Trump or anything, but it is very much like being in an apprentice program. You know, I'm dealing with family money and this type of thing you know, is a significant investment. Uh, what's represented here are four, four story high digital screens. Um, what's really good with that, we've had our competitors complaining to government about what we're doing, um, but it's already too late because it's been implemented. So here, here's a photograph of the, of the finished, um, finished location, um, a very strong, powerful statement about where we're going in the future, about how we're utilizing technology to improve the experience of fit with our volumental and stride ID about how we're utilizing um, MB1 for a customi customizable um, shoe platform that we're gonna be using more and more. Um, but it really gives a sense of where we've come from and where we're going, how we use technology, but more importantly, how we remain connected to human beings, to the consumer. Um, we're about people, and as soon as we lose focus on people, on human beings, the consumer, uh, we're going to lose, you know, lose any future opportunity for this incredible 110-year-old you know, brand.